What is up everybody? Welcome back to another Avengers video. So for today's video, I'm going to be showing off how I play as Iron Man. Iron Man is my highest level hero at 150 power, which is the max level that you can get. So I figured I would do a character guide and just go over all of the different skills and just show what build that I like to use. So for this video, I'm not going to be focusing on the primary skills. Everybody has access to the primary skills. So there's not going to be any variations of skills there. Everybody's going to have these skills equipped. So I'm just not even going to cover these for this video. So the main focus is going to be the specialty tab and the mastery tab. So let's start with the specialty tab first. So this is assuming that you are level 50 and you have like all of the perks unlocked. You don't have to really worry about the middle tree or any of that stuff. So I'm just going to focus on the ones that you can like toggle on and off. And to start off that list, we have the arc overload ability. This is going to be your L1 or left bumper ability. And you have three different options to choose from. You have the EMP, you have the arc field, and you have the arc supercharge. So for me personally, I like to go with the arc field. It says that the arc overload generates a one directional projectile bubble that blocks incoming projectiles, but allow ranged attacks from inside of the bubble to pass through damaging enemies outside of the arc reactor. So this is an absolute must for me because I mean, you get overcharged. You basically have unlimited ammo while you're overcharged and you're safe while you're inside the bubble. So, so this is just a great ability to have. You can shoot from inside the bubble. Well, what I like to do is just spam abilities. Like once I'm overcharged, I like to spam the heavy attack button, which is Y or triangle. So I'll just spam rockets or spam lasers or whatever it is I have equipped and I don't have to worry about the opponents getting to me. I also like to pop this bubble like near different objectives. Like if I'm defending a certain objective or if I'm blowing up a turbine or if I'm just activating a button or something like that, I will pop the shield over top of the objective and then that keeps the objective safe. And this has just come in hand Handy, like so many different times so that's why I like to use the arc field and then you have three different options on the other side you have EMP amplifier where you can increase the range and intensity of the pulse by 30% you have defensive field where you can reflect incoming projectiles back at opponents uh, and then you have arc jolt it says the energy burst released by arc overload instantly revives nearby teammates so every character has different support abilities and different variations that you can do to just you know to help out your team but for the most part I don't really Really need to help my teammates that much if I'm playing with friends it doesn't take very long to save your teammates and the AI is actually decently smart in this game so I don't really like to use support abilities for Iron Man I'll use like support abilities if I'm playing as Kamala or something uh, so I like to use the defensive field just to give me a little bit more protection and and to help deal a little bit of extra damage towards those ranged douchebags so then moving forward we have the unibeam so there's three different options for the unibeam you have the precision refractor which allows you to increase the duration by three seconds. We have the reserve capacitors. Uh, it allows you to store up to three different charges and then you just shoot a quick beam. And then we have the one that I use, which is the Omega Beam, where it deals a high amount of damage, but it doesn't last for nearly as long. So in my experience, I think the other two options just aren't very good. I don't think the Unibeam is very good just on its own. So I like the amount of damage that the Omega Beam does and I combined it with this perk over here, which is the Energy Condenser. It says enemies defeated by Unibeam will drop heroic orbs so this is pretty freaking handy a lot of my build is based around these heroic orbs but the other two options are triple down rapidly defeating three enemies with the unibeam will overcharge the intrinsic supercharge ability so that basically just makes you overcharge which there's so many ways already to become overcharged with iron man you don't really have to worry about that and then there's the concentrated fire the unibeam deals more damage the longer that it's focused onto one opponent so it deals a little bit more damage this is good for like boss fights and stuff but still I just don't think it's worth it. I like to have the more heroic orbs. That way I can get my ultimates back a little bit faster. Uh, so that's the loadout I like to use for the Unibeam. And this combo is really great if you're facing a ton of smaller enemies. If you're facing like a bunch of synthoids or something, you can kill like three or four or five of them in a row and you can just get that many orbs right back. Sometimes you'll get enough orbs to instantly get your Unibeam back. So I just found that that is pretty handy. So then moving forward to the ultimate heroic ability, this basically just changes the perk for the Hulkbuster. You get to choose between a Unibeam, a Disruption Pulse, and more missiles for your missile barrage. So in my experience, the Unibeam, I feel, is just useless for the Hulkbuster. It doesn't do nearly as much damage as what it should. It honestly feels like it's weaker than just base Iron Man's Unibeam, so I just don't recommend the Unibeam at all, ever. And then I'm kind of torn between these two at the bottom. I sort of switch back and forth. The Disruption Pulse actually stuns a lot of enemies, so you can 
go up and get a takedown, which can then generate more orbs if you have the right build. Uh, and it also helps out your teammates with takedowns as well, so I really like that disruption. But it's also pretty handy to go with the extra missiles to target up to eight enemies. I mean, you really fire a lot of missiles with this activated. And I found that that's also really helpful when you're going up against boss fights and stuff too. So both of those are a pretty good option, but currently I've been going with the disruption pulses of late because I just found that that's pretty handy. And then on the other side, your other options are hyper coils. It extends the deployment by five seconds. Uh, then you have energy star, reduces the intrinsic cost by 25% for actions or attacks while using Hulkbuster. And then the bottom one just says that melee attacks have a 50% chance to taunt nearby enemies. So I don't really care if enemies are taunted to the Hulkbuster or not. So I just like to go with the energy star in the middle to make my abilities just cost less so that I could stay in the Hulkbuster just a little bit longer. And then this final tree for defense, I'm not really going to go over this because if you're fully upgraded at level 50, you have all of these perks. You don't really need to switch between any of them. I mean, you have access to all of these. So I'm not really going to go over this one. This whole tree is pretty self-explanatory. So moving forward to the mastery tree, the first tree we have is combat. There's three different options. We have stun mastery, uh, we have air combat mastery, and we have combo finisher mastery. So the one at the bottom says increased damage of all combo finishers by 25%. And then the middle one says boost critical attack damage done while air jumping opponents by 15%. So I don't do that very often. It's very rare that I actually find myself air juggling opponents. So, so I just don't see the point of equipping this one. And then the one at the top says it increases all stun damage dealt to enemies by 15%. So I really like to go with this one because the more that opponents are stunned, the more often you can do takedowns. And then the more often that you do takedowns means the more often that you can generate orbs. Which brings us to the second part. This is the orb tree. The top one says performing a takedown spawns a regen pack. The middle one, which I have equipped, spawns a heroic orb. And then the bottom one spawns an intrinsic orb. So this middle tree is very important for every type of build, depending on what you want to do. Like if you want to be a support role and you just want to heal constantly, or if you want to be more of a tanky character, I would go with the regen packs, but for me I like to use the heroic orbs. This is pretty handy, anytime you get a takedown you can just create another orb which lets you get your ultimate abilities back just a little bit faster. And then the bottom one just spawns more intrinsic orbs so you can get overcharged a little bit faster, but so I don't think the bottom one's really that good either, so I just like to go with more heroic orbs. And this also helps you when you're playing with the AI and you're playing with an AI Iron Man and if he gets a takedown, that can also spawn more orbs that you can then pick up. So this perk is even handy when I'm not currently playing as Iron Man, so that's pretty cool. And then the next tree we have increased all ranged attack attack by 15% and then we have increased critical damage by 15% for all ranged attacks and then we have the 15% reduction to intrinsic energy meter cost for all ranged attacks and weapons. So this basically just lets you have a little bit more ammo. This one just lets you more, do more critical damage. And then this one just lets you do more overall damage. So that's the one that I decided to go with. I think, honestly, it depends on what kind of gear you have. If you have gear that, like, increases your critical damage, then I'd go with this one. But if you have gear that increases your, like, overall damage, I'd probably go with that one. It, it honestly just depends on your gear setup. So I like to go with overall, but that's just me. And then this tree is pretty important. This tree kind of depends on what your build is going for so normally I like to use rockets rockets are kind of my go-to I I just use rockets the most when I'm playing as Iron Man so that is the primary build that I use but for my secondary build I like to just switch everything to lasers so the top row is just affecting your repulsors the middle row affects your lasers and the bottom row affects all of your rockets so the middle row just affects all lasers lasers does the most stun damage with Iron Man and then this makes it even better like this one says increase stun damage for all laser attacks by 20%. And then these two just reduce the amount of energy that it costs to use the lasers. So I like to use this when I'm going for a stun build. I will go around and I'll just stun enemy after enemy, which then lets me do more takedowns, which then I can create even more orbs. So if I want to just generate a bunch of orbs to get my heroics, I will go with a laser build. But then normally I just like to go with the rockets. And then for the intrinsic ability, the first one we have uh, says increase increases the maximum amount of intrinsic supercharge by 15%. Then we have increased the base regeneration speed of intrinsic energy by 10%. And then the bottom one says increases intrinsic energy gained from dealing damage with light attacks by 16% per hit. So the one that I like to go with is just the one at the top. 
where you get that extra 15% while supercharged. This basically just gives you more ammo while you're supercharged. So I think that is definitely pretty handy. And then for the middle part, we have instantly generate 15 points of intrinsic energy when performing a perfect evade. Then we have stunning an enemy instantly boosts intrinsic energy by 25 points. And then the bottom one says increases the duration of overcharge state by two seconds. So this is the one that I currently like to go with. I like those two extra seconds of overcharge because that basically gives you two more seconds of unlimited ammo and that could really make the difference. And honestly, I don't really do that much evading, so I don't really see the point of that. If you're somebody that likes to do a lot of dodging and evading, I would maybe understand going with that one. And then sometimes when I like to go with my stun build, I will switch that up. I'll go with the lasers and then I'll pick this one because stunning an enemy gives me more energy. So if I have the stun build and I'm just stunning people, left and right then that means that my intrinsic energy is leveled up just faster and faster and faster so sometimes that is a good build to go with as well and then the final perk in the intrinsic ability tree we have overcharge damage boost increased damage for all attacks while overcharged by 12.5 percent and then we have 20 percent reduction in damage from all attacks while overcharged and then increase the charge rate of all heroic meters while overcharged by 10 percent so i personally like to go with the increased damage i like to combine that with the arc overload i use the left bumper ability i activate my shield i'm inside the shield i'm safe i do 12 percent extra damage while i'm in the shield and i have unlimited ammo so that's kind of my go-to for that and then for the final utility tree, there are three different options. We have energy shield efficiency, reduces the cost of energy shield activation by 15%. And then we have grants 15 intrinsic energy points when pairing enemy attacks with the energy pulse ability. And then the bottom one just adds shock damage to the energy pulse ability. So this is just regarding to his defense ability. If you hit right trigger right as somebody is about to attack you, you will send out an energy pulse. So in my opinion, I don't think it really matters too much which one you go with here, but I just like to get that little bit of extra intrinsic energy back. And then for the middle one, we have regenerate 5% per second of intrinsic energy when all heroes are near the energy barrier. This requires the energy barrier skill, which is uh, this one. Basically, if you just hold in the right trigger, you create an energy barrier, which can block some damage for you. So that's basically just a support role ability if you want to just help your teammates. And then the middle one, it says the energy barrier will reflect projectiles back at the attacker. And then the bottom one, it says heroes near the energy barrier gain a 15% critical chance increase on all attacks. So if you stand near the barrier, you will gain a 15% critical chance increase. So I like to just go with that one because if I get the chance to do critical damage, I think that's pretty worth it. And then the final tree, I like to switch on and off all the time between these. The very top one is called Afterburner. If you hold in the A button, you can fly faster and it takes away from your intrinsic energy. So I like to use this one when I go on farming runs and stuff. If you guys haven't seen my video, I go over the best way to farm units so that you can unlock legendary skins. And in that video, I like to use the Afterburner. So basically when I'm going on farming runs, I like to switch this ability on. But if I'm in combat and if I'm doing missions or if I'm doing a boss fight or a villain sector or something, I like to use the bottom one. It says increases the damage of ranged attack while flying by 15%. So just anytime you're in the air and you're flying, you do 15% extra damage. I think that that's totally worth it. I mean, 15% of extra damage is a lot of extra damage and it adds up pretty quick and you can actually notice a bit of a difference with this perk on. And then the middle one is just flares to stop incoming projectiles while you're flying. I don't find that that one's that useful. I don't really care that much. I mean, you can easily just dodge projectiles while you're in the air. So me personally, I would just rather have damage over flares. So those are the builds that I primarily like to use. Like I said, I mainly use the rockets here at the bottom. And then if I switch it up, I will use lasers. And that's basically all I really change. Sometimes I switch up and I change that one. But for the most part, that is my build with Iron Man. Now, obviously, your gear will have a lot to do with the way that you change your skills. A lot of your gear just changes different perks. Like, some of your gear can increase rocket damage. Some of them can increase uh, repulse damage. So depending on what your gear is, you might want to switch up your perks. But for the sake of this video, I decided not to include gear because I know everybody's going to have different gear than one another. It's all kind of up to RNG and luck to determine, like, what kind of gear you have. So maybe in the future, I'll show off, like, what 
the best gear is and like how to try to farm to get it. But just for the sake of this video, I decided not to include any of the gear in the build that I use. And then just for some extra tips with Iron Man, there's currently a bug going on with Iron Man where if you deploy the energy barrier and if you jump up and you're hovering just slightly above it, you can activate the right trigger, which is the block button, and you can activate it over and over and over again. And if you do this, it increases your intrinsic ability up all the way and it will make you overcharged. And if you're overcharged, you deal that extra damage and you basically have unlimited ammo. So you can just wash, rinse, and repeat this over and over and over. You can just deploy a barrier, jump up above it, block, 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 and then you get unlimited ammo over and over and over again. So that's just a cool trick with Iron Man right now. I would imagine it'll probably get fixed here in the future. But honestly, based off of how many bugs are in this game, it wouldn't surprise me if this bug just never gets fixed because it's not really that game breaking. So that's just a little bit of an extra tip for you guys. And then another tip for Iron Man involves the Hulkbuster. If you guys have the legendary artifact called the Darkhold, it's a book that you get from completing the missions. So if you complete all of the missions and you get this artifact leveled up at least three times, and with this book, you can basically create unlimited Hulkbusters. And the way that this works is you basically just lay down a Hulkbuster for your teammate. And if you don't know how to do this, you just hold in the bumpers and then you can choose where you deploy it. But normally with Hulkbuster, if you just tap both of the bumpers, it activates Hulkbuster just for you, and then you climb inside of it. But if you hold it in, it lets you manually choose where to deploy it, and then your teammates can walk up, and they can manually get in the Hulkbuster themselves. So, so you can essentially just share the Hulkbuster with your friends. So the way that this works is you deploy Hulkbuster, your friend gets into the Hulkbuster, and then as soon as they get into it, you activate the book by pressing both the right and the left stick simultaneously. But you have to make sure that you are at full health, and you have none of your abilities fully charged. You have to be completely out of all of your abilities and you have to have full health. And then you hit both of the sticks. It takes your health down to critical levels and then it will fully charge all of your heroic abilities. And since your friend is already in a Hulkbuster, you can then lay down a second Hulkbuster and then you guys can basically just have two or three or however many Hulkbusters. And you can just do this pattern over and over and over again. So I think that's pretty cool. Me and my friends have done this a couple times for boss fights and stuff and it's coming pretty handy. And I would imagine at some point they're probably going to patch that because I think having multiple Hulkbusters is just a little bit broken. Um, but that pretty much does it for this Iron Man video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Iron Man isn't too crazy to get the hang of. You basically just have to spam your rage attacks and I think you guys will be good. But like I said since the gear is so hard to come by in this game i didn't really focus on any of the gear in this video and but if this video gets a lot of good feedback i might make a video on the gear here in the future but let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below if this video helped you out please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications be sure to check out another video follow me on twitch at swanee plays games live and be sure to join the channel's discord all of those links are found in the description down below and that is going to do it for me guys and i will talk to you all in the next video.